Hello, this is Darren. And this is Paige. And this is Where's, Where's the, the lemonade? lemonade? Where we talk about what happens when life throws you lemons. Make some lemonade? Uh, maybe. Some weeks it's lemon squares. Yeah, some weeks it's just lemons. Yeah. <laughs> On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to destroy your marriage. <laughs> Sounds like a really fun topic. Yes, it should be lots of fun. Okay, we were reviewing some articles uh, for another podcast, and you came uh, and you fell upon a couple of these articles, and one was called How to Kill Your Marriage. Yes, and I was like, what does that mean? And it was one of those awful articles that you have to, it had 29 ways to kill your marriage, <laughs> and you had to hit next after each way. Oh, I hate those. So that, if, for you guys that like our links, that's on our blog. You can go click on the links and click through all 30 yeah reasons why well and you you get sucked in right because once you click through like 10 you're like well i'm th- a third of the way yeah there. exactly you're like i gotta i gotta see this through so yeah exactly so we we took that article and a couple other articles and threw them together and renamed it instead of how to kill your marriage how to destroy <laughs> we, thought it was a, we thought it was a little morbid yeah how to destroy your marriage <laughs> And so much better. So much better. <laughs> and instead of listing 30 or 40, which we found, we kind of grouped them together into different things that um, people have said that helped destroy your marriage. And we found some of those things that we've done that ourselves. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, it was, you know, I think even though it sounds very negative, um, these are good things to watch out for to make sure that you're not making these mistakes in your marriage, right? Yeah, and that's the whole point of us bringing these up is if yeah. you see these um, patterns in your own marriage, do something to stop them. Right. Yes, because we don't want any marriages destroyed ever. No, we want no, them. absolutely not. We want the, you know, singing birds flying around your head going, <laughs> la, 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 la. That's what we want. Still waiting for that. What the, do you mean still waiting for that? I mean, the birds come and go. <laughs> now I know what to get her. I'm going to get her some songbirds, some, some little song birds, birds that, that say, I'm dreaming. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Okay. So let's start. What was, what was one of the first ones oh, that the, had? The first one, I think this one's uh, funny because you kind of already alluded to it. It's becoming stagnant or boring. Yes, that is really important. And we talked about this a couple podcasts ago. We kind of felt like we were in the stagnant, boring. Yeah, we boring. had no kids at home, date night. We're like... Let's just watch a rom-com, which means I'm going to fall asleep on the couch. And I'm going to get mad at you for falling asleep on the couch. Right, so we switched it up, <laughs> if you remember. We switched up a little bit. And we, we watched an action movie? Oh, wait, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I still fall asleep. <laughs> no, we went out instead. Yes. And we, yes, we and were it was gonna... no big deal. I mean, we didn't spend hardly any money. Like it, it, no, but, but we sure had fun. Yes, and just to shake it up a little bit, that's really... Yeah, you got to keep that romance alive. Yes. So now I know what I need to do to keep the romance alive with Paige is go buy some songbirds. Songbirds, yes. Well, and just a couple of weeks ago, do you remember? We um, no. did the same thing. We didn't have any of the kids and we said, let's go, let's get out. And I said, we can either go sit by the lake and talk about, we were going to talk about a trip that we want to take. Oh yeah, and so we went to dinner. We went to and- dinner because it was a little chilly. So yeah, we went to dinner and just talked about our trip. We started, you wanted to talk about the calendar and I said, nope. We're not no talking calendar. about the calendar. But we got our laptop out and looked at all the cool places we could go. Yeah. It was fun. It was really fun. So yeah, just doesn't have to be anything expensive, but don't forget that you married your best friend. Well, and that's another thing that the article said was don't forget to be a friend yep. with uh, your spouse. Right. Or you should be sharing things and wouldn't that be fun or, you know, uh, find some things in common that you can talk about. Yeah. For example, The Bachelor. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying we watch this, <laughs> but I've heard Confe- that some people do. Confessions. <laughs> and it might be interesting and to I, poke fun of. I only watch it with my wife, so I have something in common with her. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. But no, we have fun watching because it's fun silly. We, we joke. Poke, and- we poke, I mean, we certainly don't watch it because we think it's this, you know. High quality TV show. We we make fun of it. It's a mocking thing. Yes, but, but no. Do something fun. Do something silly. Read a book together. Listen to music together. Go to a concert. Yeah, take a walk around the neighborhood. 
throw pudding in your spouse's face, whatever. Oh, oh, we haven't be, tried be that one. silly, be fun. You know, don't be stagnant and boring. Well, and this one comes, this one goes into one of the other things that we read was don't be in love with your phone or TV. Yes. And this, this can be a real problem. Do you think it's a problem with us? Sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> See, we're being real here, people. Yeah, we, some, we, did not, we did not talk about this until just no, now. No, no. Sometimes, sometimes I think we feel that way. I mean, you, I bet you feel that way sometimes. Um, you've gotten so much better. It, it really only bothers me when we're in a group of people and you pull out your phone and I'm like, hello, that's kind of rude. Like, or at the dinner table, but you, you're so, 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 so much better. Oh, I've, I've been but, trained. But when we are in a group of people, like with our kids or something, and you pull out your phone, I kick you or I pinch yeah, you. Yeah, she does. And she does. yeah. But I also think sometimes if it's just you and I, and we just immediately go to our phones. Yeah. That's bad too. In yeah. fact, we saw when we went on our date um, to talk about, hey, planning a trip or something, we saw a family. Oh. They all were on their devices sitting had chilies of all places, sitting there and not communicating. They were always just on their devices. Literally not saying a word. It was the sad. Ki- it was a dad and his two kids. It was sad. And the one daughter who was probably 12, she was on her phone. The little boy who was probably six, he didn't have a phone, but the chilies has those little devices. Entertainment, yeah. Yeah, so he was on that, and the dad was on his phone, and they, were not, they did not say a word. No, they didn't. Now, this can creep into your marriage, too, yeah. like a phone in bed. We do that every night. Someone does that every night. Oh, wait. You're just saying that I'm the only one. You, I, I oh. didn't say it was you. Did I say it was you? Oh. <laughs> it is both of us. It is both of us. That is, so that is actually when I, that is my relaxing thing before I fall asleep. So I do. I get in bed. I mean, I don't read the news any other time no, during you, the day. You read your phone and I rub your back. Yep. I read, I read the news on my phone before I fall asleep. And then sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'll read the news. Yeah, in the boring. Oh, brother. Because <laughs> you're so exciting when we go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. just be weary of that. <laughs> Right? I mean, that, that can become quite stagnant in itself. All right. Yes. So what's, an, what's another thing on there? What's Put nice others thing? before your spouse. That's a way to destroy your marriage. Yeah. So what does that mean? You mean like having a boyfriend or a girlfriend on the side? Well, or? that would definitely destroy your marriage. Yes, yes. that would. That's, that's just implied <laughs> that that's going to destroy your marriage. Um, this is more, it can be things or it can be people. So work or money. Yeah, that can be a big you problem. You can put before your spouse. And there are times in our marriage where I have done that, where I've said, you know, work is super important and yep. I've got to focus on that. And you remind me, a lot of times you've been very, all right, I understand how important it is right now. Yeah. But, and then you tell me, hey, too much work. You need to cut well, it back. Yeah. And, you have said to me, tell me when it's too much. And I'm like, okay, I will. Yeah, And, you and I have said that a couple of times. I've been like, Enough is enough. Yeah. So you have to be cognizant of that. Yeah. Also, it's not just um, putting work in front of your spouse. It's also friends. Yes. Or your social life. Yep. You know, my social life is more important than my spouse who's here. I'm spending all my time on Facebook. Right. Or on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is out or there. Or out with my friends. Yeah. yeah. Where that becomes more important than your spouse. Yeah. Now, we, we had a little bit of an issue with this when you and I first got married. Yeah, we did. Because I had some really good friends. Like some and, friends that helped you get through your last divorce. Oh my goodness. They were so important in my life. And I had other friends that I went on girls trips with. And I was doing a girls trip, I think at the time, with my mom and my sister. So, yeah, and I, and I told like, you all this. What about me? But I told you all this before we got married. I, was I know like, it doesn't matter when, you, when you're when you dating, yes. everything. Oh, yeah. He was like, oh, no, that's no problem. Oh, no, it's all yeah, good. It's all it, good. And then when I'm like, okay, so I'm planning this trip. And, I'm, and you're like, really? Like I, I don't think you thought I was really going to go. And I'm like, no, um, I knew you were going to go. I'm I just going. didn't know it was so all much. <laughs> it wasn't that much. It seemed like, you know, it seemed I, like a lot. No, I need you to be honest here for our, our listeners want to know the real yeah. truth. I honestly think that you, th- this is my perception. So tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. I thought that you were going to think that I was going to marry you, right? My best friend that I married and that I was then going to be like, I don't need to go on these girls' trips, or I don't need these friends. Oh, I don't know if was I... Was it a little bit like that? Maybe it was a little bit like that. I don't know. 
Because you just seemed really, I mean, I remember well, I the first. Like, I was somewhat insecure in our relationship. Yes. And, and so then all you, of a sudden, you still have all of this. Over, so I think that's pretty normal, right? You, you were not but excited. No, I was not excited. Now you're, you're good with it because you, you, you're not insecure with our relationship anymore. No, and, no but and I, think that, I think that goes in, into, and that goes into being overly jealous or untrusting in your relationship. Mm, yes. Which came up later, right? Yep. Because, you know, we both had um, come through divorces, so we both had some untrusting baggage that came with us. Yeah, of course. Right? Anyone does it goes through yeah. a divorce. Yep. So all of a sudden I was like, ah, uh, I don't, you know, but. I got over it. It took you time. Did. You got over it. We had a few arguments about it. And I was like, dude, I'm going. Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the next thing on putting other people before your spouse. And okay. this one, this one's kind of a little bit insidious. Um, I see it a lot in a lot of uh, marriages and even in our own marriage sometimes. It's when you put the kids before your spouse. That ha I see that happen a lot with other, with other families. I think, and I may be wrong, but I think this happens more with women than men in general. I know we shouldn't generalize, but right. I think that nurture part that most women have with children kind of goes into, all right, I'm, I'm a nurturer. My husband doesn't want me to nurture him. Right. right? He wants me to love him. And that's different than nurturing. Yeah. And so they kind of fall into, my kids are the most important thing in my life. Absolutely. And they don't want to leave them. And, oh, they, they can't live without me for a couple of days or whatever it is, or a night. And, oh, please don't do that. Please, you and your spouse need that alone time. And that's a tough one to overcome. Yeah, it Especially is. Especially when you've gone through a divorce. Yes. And a blended family. And maybe your whole life has been around your kids since that divorce. Right. And now you're letting someone else in. And now you're supposed to you know, make them first. That right. can be very difficult to do. But you know, we need to show our kids that our, we put our spouse first and need to show them that loving relationship so that they can have something to, you know, um, look forward to in a marriage, right, with their own spouse. No, I agree. Okay, let's talk about the next set of things that we found in these articles and that we've seen in our own marriage, and that is ignoring problems. And this mm. ties all into communication and open communication. Sometimes it's just easier to ignore the problem, right? Like, it's going to be a thing. Bury it. Bury it. Yes. Bury it. Push it down. Push it down. But, you know, I mean, we've talked about this on our podcast before, that sometimes you don't want to bring things up because you're just like, know where this is going to go. I know that this is going to be a thing. Yeah, but you really didn't resolve it. You're ignoring no. it. And so it bubbles up and it causes more issues. Yeah, it just spins out of control, right? And then every little thing, because because you're thinking about this problem, all the little things are just building up, building up. So, yeah. Well, and I've, I've, um, we've read some articles that say they can judge how a couple is going to survive or not based off of watching them resolve conflict. And if they avoid conflict and never argue, there's, there's a higher likelihood of, of uh, problems in that marriage. Interesting. Because they're not, they're yeah. always just caving and they're, they're not sharing. They're not communicating. Right. They're just whatever you want, dear. Right, right. And Which that's that, not, that that's builds not up good. resentment. And, yeah. Exactly. Okay. And that also means that maybe I'm shutting off and saying, Talking head over here, I'm not even going to listen. Yes. So I'm never la, la, listening. La, la, la. I'm just going to do whatever I'm going to yep. do anyway. Right. And you Go just, ahead and argue with me. Yeah. I don't care. I'm just going to nod occasionally, act like I'm listening. I've yep. never, not that I've done that. <laughs> 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 I've heard about it. It's amazing we still survive, that we're still together with all the problems that we have. Well, we're just, nor we're a normal couple that's trying to figure it out every day, just like everyone else, right? Well, absolutely. And sometimes we're aware enough to go, let's not do this again. Like, we know this pattern. Let's not go down this road again. Let's and we're like, it. okay, yeah, we yeah. understand this. Yes. Put your feelings aside. Let's yes. debate it out and right. then move on. Yes. Right. And that's when it's the best in our relationship, when we... When we can talk like grown-ups. <laughs> now, this is one thing that's interesting because yes. one of the articles said, um, don't go to bed angry, dot, dot, dot. Or do. Or do. Now, for us, this is an interesting one because 
I always believed in don't go to bed angry. Let's hash this thing out until we can, you know, both agree. And you're not like that at all. Nope. Nope. Oh, no. No way. I'm like, you call time out. Let's put a pin in it. Mm-hmm. I need to get some sleep because usually it's because you sleep like a baby. I after sleep we like a baby. I, I don't. And Darren's up all night. And yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> but no, because I just, I can tell when we're based on our attitudes towards each other. I can tell when nothing's going to get resolved because we are in a heightened state, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're not in a state of, yes, let's work this out. No, there's one thing that you've done that's made this easier for me. And that is, you know what? Let's not talk about this tonight. Before, you used to just get quiet and go, I'm going to sleep. I'm like, what? <laughs> and you wanted to keep hashing it out. And I'm like, we've gone the rounds. Nothing's been resolved. Good night. And then the next morning, I'm like, why are we so mad about that? And that's why I like, I like the timeout. You kind of got, have the whole night. To I, think I like it. it when you call timeout. Yes. Instead of just giving me the silent treatment. Yes. Because that's how I felt. I right. felt, oh, she's just shut down now. And right. I'm getting the silent treatment. And she's just off sleeping. And I'm sitting here going, <laughs> my mind just goes, what in the world is going on here? Uh, and I'm, I'm Why dreaming. did she think, no. <laughs> Is she crazy to think that? Uh, she must be crazy. Look, probably. she's sleeping like a baby. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So, so I appreciate it when you say, you know what, honey? Time out. When I actually call it. When yeah. you call it, instead of just say, fine, I'm just going to go to sleep. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have done that. Yes. I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what? We're not, I usually just say, we're not getting anywhere. So good night. But yes. Yeah, so you like it when I, when I actually say, let's take a time out. Let's talk about this in the morning. And seriously, wouldn't you say 99% of the time when we have done that? Oh, yeah. It's so much better in the morning. So, it's like, so much I, better. I can't believe I said that. You can't believe you said that. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, most of the time you start by apologizing, which is how it should always be. <laughs> wow. It's a work of fiction here today, isn't it? <laughs> no, but seriously, we usually both apologize in the morning because oh, you do. Oh, absolutely. You look back and you were in this heightened state. Well, I had just spent eight hours thinking about it. <laughs> I spent a good 10 minutes when I woke up in the morning. <laughs> so just be mindful of the way that you guys communicate and, and don't, oh, the silent treatment is one of the worst things. It's the worst. It is the worst. And I don't ever mean to give you the silent treatment. You think I do, but I don't. It's just, I need some time to think. It's not. Well, and that's why treatment. I needed you to say, yes. Hey, I need, I need a time. Yeah. I need some time to think. Because you and I react to things differently. You want to write them. it out. I want to get it to, fixed. You want to hash it out. And I like to think not for like days, just for maybe an hour or two or two or eight. If I'm sleeping. Yes. Yes. It happens to fall between the hours of, you know, midnight and 8 <laughs> a.m. But you know what I mean? I like to think about what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or how I feel. Because sometimes I'm really not sure how I'm feeling about it. And so I feel like if I... Oh, I know exactly how I'm feeling about it in that moment. In that moment. And then you regret sometimes later, I regret later, it later, right? yeah. And I don't want to do... I want to think and go, is this how I really feel about it? I need to think about this. Yeah. So I'm just... That's just our two different ways of processing things. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing it's in there, never threaten divorce. I mean, that's... Never. That's pretty awful to that's do that. That's awful. Don't do that. If, if someone in your relationship is threatening divorce... Go see a counselor. That's, oh, time. that's yeah. Your way. Yeah, you need to go see a counselor you need to go. for sure. All right. Next one is um, something that will destroy your marriage is to stop being intimate. That will destroy your marriage. Yeah. Um, yeah. I we both believe that intimacy is a key aspect of your marriage for sure. It helps you get closer together, um, both physically and emotionally. Yes. Where you need to be yep. right in order to work problems out yes so, so do not hold I, I i have had friends in the past that that was a weapon against oh, their husband awful. you know if you don't do this then i'm not going to do that and i mean that is just terrible ladies don't do that or men don't do that right yeah. do not ever use sex as a weapon or a punishment don't ever do that no 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 so all right the next one not parenting as a one unit that can really affect your marriage wouldn't you say oh absolutely because why did you say that? Why, you know, you didn't check with me first. You didn't, you know, a lot of times if, if you're working with a kid or disciplining a kid, helping them correct a bad behavior, hopefully you have time to talk ahead of time. 
Sometimes you don't. No. And that happened this last week. Yes, it did. Yeah. We haven't really talked about that, have we? No, we, we haven't. But <laughs> I looked at you when I said, well, what about if we did this yeah. with one of my kids? And what am I supposed to do when you're actually I know. saying Oh, I was like, oh. And I'm looking at you like, huh. I, and I and I said, you know what? I know I'm going to have a conversation after this with Paige. <laughs> but you know what? We've talked about this before. I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, because I was trying to find out what would be the best thing for... You were trying to come up with a really good solution to a problem with one of our kids. And it certainly wasn't malicious or out of line. It was... And I could tell you were really trying to do what was best. I think if you would have talked to me about it, I would have agreed to that. Yeah, I think it just caught you off guard because... It did, because we had not talked about it at all. It just popped into my head. Yeah. In fact, I didn't even know we were having this conversation until we sat down. Right. And it's like, oh, this is happening? Yeah. And, and I, yeah, and then when you said that, I was just looking at you going, huh. And I know <laughs> he was looking at me like, I might be in trouble here. <laughs> and... But it turned yeah. out to be a good idea. It did. And you even said when it was Sam that we were talking to, when Sam left, was leaving the room, you said, you know, you go think about this, buddy. And your mom and I are going to think about this and talk about it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we will. Because, you know, sometimes when you are parenting and you're disciplining or teaching a child, you can't plan everything ahead of time. You can't. We didn't know that conversation was going to happen right then. No. And sometimes the brainstorming just happens instantly. So you got to give each other kind of, you know, sometimes a facial expression where the kid can't see, like, you know, might help, you know, alleviate. And we have to remember, it's okay to come back to your child and go, you know what? The more we talked about it, we decided that's, that's not going to work. Like, right. there's nothing wrong with that. Kids need to see that we say things, they say things that they regret. Well, we and say I also that- want the kids to see the whole process of brainstorming. And, yeah. All right. Here's a problem that's going on. What things can we do to resolve it? Right. Oh, you know, dad came up with an idea. Right. I have an idea. And give them that opportunity, especially when they're teenagers. Give them some options. Right. right. Saying, okay, this is happening. How do we create create, uh, create a better atmosphere? Right. So that doesn't happen anymore. Yep. It's those sorts of things. Yeah. But for the most part, you need to be as, your kids need to know that they can't go, I'm going to go over there. And I, you know, if mom says no, I'm going to run over to dad. Or I, I mean, and little things, it's fine. But on big things, you've got to be together on, on, you know. Well, yeah. Things. And even, even little things, especially in a blended family. Oh, boy. Oh, teenagers. And in fact, um, it's one of the counselors we were talking to said it's in their reptilian minds with all those hormones flowing. It's this survival mode. Right. They are going to play parents against each other. And now there's not just two. There are four. Right. Yeah. Right? They have and a plethora to choose from. They have from. a plethora of, to choose from. And it's not that they're trying to be malicious. They're just trying to survive. Right. Yeah. Um, so just recognizing that. And that can be really hard in a marriage, but also when there's Two sets of parents raising a child, it's even Absolutely. more difficult. So much more complicated. All right. I like this one. Not willing to change or grow. I am not stubborn. Why, why are you bringing this up? Mm-hmm. So we talked about this because we, we, when we were talking about which ones we should put in here, and you were like, eh, should we put that in there? And I said, you know what? I think that's really important when, if you keep going down the same road with the same result and it's not a good result. You've got to sit back and go, we've got to make some changes. Like, this is not working. And how can I change to make this better? How can we change together to make this better? You can't ever tell your partner to change. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't. You can't say, you need to change, right? That does not work. No. But you say, how can I change to, you know, make this situation better so we don't keep going down the same road? But no, it's important that you, ch- you learn and grow together. Sometimes that's going to a counselor together. We're willing to, right? We're willing to, you know, learn how we can communicate well, better. And- I think it has to do with, um, you know, the gospel talks about this and, and scriptures talk about this. Yeah. an open heart. Yes. Right. A broken heart. Right. And a contrite spirit. Being able to say, I can make some changes in my life. Right. I'm not perfect. And being willing and open with your spouse to say, what can I do that's better? You know, you're really good at this. In fact, just this last week, you and I were having a conversation. I don't even remember what it was about anymore. Um, that's, that's, that's one good thing that Darren really likes about me. I forget about our arguments a lot of the time. Except ones that aren't resolved. 
Well, yeah, because those aren't resolved. So yeah, they're they could there. be eight years old. She's yeah. like an elephant. She yeah. remembers. But the ones that are resolved, I do. Like, I'm like, I don't even yeah. remember. No, I agree. But I remember you said, I was, I was telling you things and you go, thank you for your feedback. No, it drove you crazy. <laughs> and I go, I even said to you, I go, thank you for your feedback. Well, I didn't know what else to I say. People, I was like, what else am well, I supposed to okay, say? I thank you. I will make changes. <laughs> um, thanks for helping me out. And I'm like, okay, so thank you for your feedback. I felt like I was in annual review at work. <laughs> and then you said that I was like, okay, boss. Like, I don't know. It was so weird. <laughs> it was weird. But that's what it was. You, I was giving you feedback on something and you were saying, I appreciate that. Yeah. You, you, you I wasn't trying to be snarky snarky no yeah. and i think you thought i was i i sort of did i couldn't tell i was like <laughs> it was kind of funny because it threw you off and you didn't did. know what to say and i was like huh that kind of works it did throw me <laughs> off i was like what did you just say so but you're really good at saying i you know i'll take this and i'll i'll work on it Okay, there's some more things that we found in these articles, and we kind of grouped them in this last section here. Yep. Um, they all have to do with just interpersonal things and logistics when you live with someone, and you know you're you're a, a team, right? Yep. No, one of them is spending more money than you what you have. It's, it's always going to cause problems. Always going to cause problems when yep. there's limited resources and you're spending exorbitantly. It, and yeah, someone's going out and going crazy. That's always going to cause problems. Always, always, always. Don't do that. Right. Don't do that. The other one, and this kind of ties into that, and that's keeping secrets from each other. I remember, and I hope my mom isn't offended by that I bring this up, but because my mom and dad had an excellent marriage. But I remember my mom, she would take me shopping almost every weekend when I was a teenager. I got a new outfit. Someone was spoiled. I was very spoiled. And it was very important to me. <laughs> yes, it's <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. And she would say to me sometimes, not always, so maybe it was like around bill paying time. I don't know. But she would say to me, don't, because my dad would get, my dad was kind of like you. He wanted to see my new outfits. He wanted to see my new clothes. He would very, always you know, compliment me. And sometimes she would say, don't show these to your dad this weekend. And I'd be like, okay. I never asked why, but she would always be like, just, you know, this isn't a good time. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah, if you can't do something without, your spouse there with you, then why are you doing it? I mean, yeah, yeah. You, sh you should definitely make you think about, about that, right? This next one. Well, let's skip that one and go to the oversharing. Okay. It's almost the opposite of keeping secrets. Okay. Yes. Oversharing. It's when you're oversharing and not, not with your spouse, but oversharing with your friends. Yes. Oversharing is not good. Is right. Good. And this is one thing I really appreciate about you because sometimes some of your friends might overshare and you stop them and say, hey, not. <laughs> You cross the boundaries here. Well, you don't want to. I mean, I, people know I'm an open book and people will think that they'll sit to, probably sit there and go, Paige does overshare. I rarely talk about our arguments. Ra I mean, ra I don't talk well, about I, those types of things. I mean, yes. The bedroom or I, things. No, that no. I might joke about it, but no, I mean, not anything in seriousness or. Yeah, so um, I think that's really important because yeah. oversharing can, you, you have kind of cut into that. Um, trust. Yes. You need to have an openness. You know, if you were to overshare, I wouldn't want to be as open with you. I would right. hold things back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because and I don't I would, want anyone else to know. Right. And I would always, you know, you got to put yourself in your spouse's position. If you're sitting there trashing your spouse to someone, how would you feel if you knew that they were at work trashing you to someone? Be yeah, it would be. Well, it may not that. even be trashing someone. It may right. be something that I tell you in confidence and say, yes. you know, this is something really right. just for us. And yeah. then you go off and tell someone. Hey, right. Not cool. Not, not cool. cool. Not cool. All right. Tell now now let's go to helping around the house. Yes. That's one way to destroy your marriage is someone that never helps around the house. And I would say that that's probably a big one for a lot of people these days. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. We, we talked about this. I mean... It used to be very different, right? Yes. The ro roles used to be very defined and very clear, right? right? Men made the money, women stayed in the home, worked, you know, in the house with the kids, which is just as noble and exhausting oh, as having more a job. Exhausting. Um, 
But now those lines these days are, even if, you, even if women don't work, these lines are still blurred. Men are still expected to come home and help out. They are, right? Yeah, In today's yeah, world, they are. men are expected to help out, um, especially if both of you are working. Of course, you're supposed to, you, you both should be work, doing yeah, house know, stuff. Th this goes into that setting expectations too. I mean, man, I think there's a lot of pressure on men today. I think there is. But one thing I want to remind men, if any men are listening to this, it is important for the man to know the most romantic or attractive thing you can do for your wife to seem, to seem attractive. Change a diaper. Change a diaper. Do the dishes. Hold the yeah. laundry. I'm not even joking. That is the most romantic thing you could possibly do is for, for, for you to take a minute and go, you know what? I know she's been doing this all day. Or I know, you know, and I know she's got these other things to do. I'm going to help out. Oh, it's you know awesome. What? That one also fits into the last one that we have on here, which is keeping score. Oh. Because I've seen this when we've talked to couples before and the husband says, well, I did these things. I get yes. this many number of points. Right. And the wife says, well, I did these things. I get yep. this number of points. Yep. I'm like. Oh my goodness, do you guys have like a computer program at home that keeps track of who does what? Keeping score and, is not good. I mean, even if you're not physically saying these points. But if you're doing it even in your head. Yes, like I just did that for you, but yet you didn't do that for me. Or I Don't do that. That's terrible. Yeah, so why are you doing something for your spouse? Because you love them or you're expecting a certain thing back? Right, exactly. That, exactly. I mean, so, we all do that uh, somewhat. Right. Right, but if, but and, you've and got to it, change that around to I'm doing this for them because I love them. Right, and I think it will naturally occur that the more you do for your spouse, the more they'll do for you. They'll want to do for you, and don't sit there and go, "Oh, I've tried this, and after three weeks, you know, nothing happened." You've got to give it some time. You've got to give it three some time. Three weeks but isn't yeah. long enough. No, three weeks is not long enough. Just keep reminding yourself Gosh, you that keep working on it. You then. love them. That they're not annoying to you. <laughs> that no, that you're doing these things because you love them and you want to improve your relationship. Well, and that goes into uh, jealousy between spouses as well. Yes, this all fits into that, right? And we talked a little bit about this before the podcast. Like, if I'm traveling and I'm going to a really fancy restaurant, yeah, do you feel jealous? Not one iota. Yeah, I know people that do. Yes, right. And, or I got to go see a concert, right? At one yeah. of the conferences that I'm speaking at or right. something. And you didn't go. And there's been times when I'm like, gosh, I wish Paige was here with me. Yes. So and I you tell do, her how great the do. concert is. You say that to me. You're like, I wish you were here. And I'm like, oh, that looks so fun. I'm not jealous at all. Yeah. Not and one this, bit. But this I, know could that be a that, big problem. I know that can be a problem. But no. And maybe one of the reasons I'm not jealous is because you never, like, when I go out to lunch with my friends or I'm going to go on a walk with my friends. Or I'm, whatever I'm going to go do, you never complain. Go to Taco Bell with Sam when I'm eating at a yes, Brazilian I mean, come on. You're, you're probably jealous of us, right? <laughs> totally jealous. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But no, we give each other that respect. You never go, oh, really? No, you know what? I, I appreciate that you're like, wow, you had a great opportunity to go yes? do that. I'm like, I mean, how fantastic. Cool. And I love when you tell me about it. No, don't, don't be jealous of your spouse. Be happy for them. Be happy for them. All right, lemonade moment of the week has to do with the coronavirus. What's it called? Uh, COVID nineteen or thirteen? I don't, I don't know. know those. Anyway, coronavirus. The novel what? coronavirus. Yes. Yeah, so well, you know, it's it's turned into quite a thing, right? I mean, it's affecting the world economy now. Yes. Um. I mean, at first, I was like, "Oh, come on, people! It's not even as bad as the flu, right?" That was totally my attitude. Just going, um, the flu affects. 40 million people a year, and this has affected 80,000. Like, right. let's all calm down. So just yesterday, um, we got notice from my work that because of the coronavirus and the potential for a pandemic, all travel, except for essential travel, is now stopped. So that's been good for, for me because I've, I've been traveling a lot for work and visiting customers and, and going to conferences and things. Now all my conferences are canceled. So I guess the lemonade part is even though this is happening, 
it's giving me more time at home. Yeah. We're trying to find something positive out of this. Yes. Um, out of this, you know, horrible thing. If you like today's episode, give us five stars on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and head to Facebook and like us. And check out our blog at wheresthelemonade.org, where you can leave questions and comments. And, but most of all, go out and make some lemonade. You betcha, baby. Yeah.